All right, you guys ready? Ready. Utah is home to five of the nation's top national parks, also known as the Mighty Five. Pretty incredible stuff. For this adventure, we're hitting two of our favorites on a Red Rock road trip through the heart of Utah's epic desert landscapes. Our first stop is below the massive walls of Zion National Park. We'll pull over, get out, take a little hike, find a little slot canyon. Then it's tunnel time on Utah Route 9 to another hike into Zion's less crowded backcountry before heading to Bryce Canyon National Park on Utah's amazing scenic Route 12. We're not even in the park yet, and uh, all the shots you want to stop and grab are just beautiful. Bryce Canyon's famous hoodoo formations are the big draw here, but shooting sunrise over Bryce is a bucket list dream come true. It's 16 degrees outside. This says 19 degrees. What's our elevation? 8,100. 8,100 feet. Combined into one adventure, Zion and Bryce Canyon pack plenty of front country punch, but exploring off the beaten path here <sighs> unlocks the unique scenic finds you'll never forget. And really the trick is to just listen, which is hard to do right now, because I'm out of breath from climbing up out of the creek bed. Get ready for two photogenic national parks explored on one drive through a land of sandstone, blue sky, and snow-covered sage. We've got a little lens in, a little lens envy going on. Half your lens is a hood. <laughs> <laughs> when you travel, the world becomes a smaller place. When you explore with friends that share a love of photography, destinations come to life. Are you not entertained? We tell the stories of travel with our cameras capturing images of the most beautiful places on Earth. But every adventure reveals more than what's found in the frame. The people, the food, and the unexpected turns that happen on every journey. Go? Go, he's going downtown on you. Hang on a second. Oh. Brings the full experience of travel into focus. Production funding for Outside Beyond the Lens provided by Visit Fresno County. Nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's Central Valley. From Fresno and Clovis, you can drive to three nearby national parks. By Hedrix Chevrolet. Hedrick Chevrolet is proud to support the spirit of travel in each of us. Every journey has a first step. Adventures start here. By Advanced Beverage Company, serving Bakersfield and Kern County for over 50 years. From our family to yours, supporting Valley PBS and the wonders of travel. By the Penstar Group, promoting growth and opportunity in business through collaboration and partnerships for the future. By Hodges Electric, serving California Central Valley for over 50 years, dedicated to supporting public television and the calling in all of us to explore. And by Visit Yosemite Madera County, California's gateway to Yosemite National Park. Explore the outdoor magic of Madera County and be inspired to discover more. Utah is a place of great landscapes and scenic diversity. The rugged mountains in the northern part of the state seem to change without a hint of blending transformation into the slick rock regions of southern Utah where the state's five national parks are all found. These parks, known as the Mighty Five, include Zion, Bryce, Capitol Reef, Canyonlands, and Arches National Parks. And all can be visited by a network of highways and routes that make getting to these national treasures almost as memorable as the parks themselves. Once again, we're in road trip mode which for the purposes of shooting a TV series about photography and the beauty of places like America's national parks is a very efficient way to cover a lot of ground, to capture multiple destinations in a short amount of time. We've set aside seven days to explore three of Utah's national parks that will be broken up into two separate episodes. First up, the sandstone cliffs and cathedral-like appeal of Zion National Park. All right, so we're pulled over uh, in the little town of Hurricane, Utah, which is just east of St. George off the 15. And uh, we're just kind of in the parking lot here at the Rooster Run Cafe. And before we get into the park, we just want to build up the cameras, get the microphones going, make sure everything's working right. 
and then that way we can just you know kind of pull off the road and, and start grabbing stuff as we're coming in the drive into zion's really pretty if you've been to yosemite before it's kind of got that same grandeur to it as you approach it through the little little town that's uh, just outside spring is it springdale springdale yeah springdale it's just outside of the park so we'll get everything ready to go that way when we start driving we uh, we're in it we're in it to win it as we approach Zion National Park, the scenery begins to warm up for the main attraction just up the road. The Virgin River that carves through the heart of Zion just ahead has a less dramatic effect on the landscape here, gently winding through private property and agricultural spans of Southern Utah. Pretty incredible stuff. It's pretty much like the best day ever on this shoot so far. We just started, we're not even there yet. But we've got crystal clear blue skies. And whenever you get, the storm went through here about about a week ago, about four or five days ago. And uh, I knew watching the weather when, when, when it was going through here, we were gonna have this kind of stuff. When that snow's on those rocks, it's just, it's just magic. Springdale is the closest town to Zion National Park, a quiet place in winter months, booming in the summer vacation season. And as we pass through the quaint confines of Zion's doorsteps, the impact of this very special place on Earth casts its spell on three more souls. Zion became a national park in 1919, and of its 229 square miles, is best known for Zion Canyon. Carved by the North Fork of the Virgin River, the canyon is framed by red and tan Navajo sandstone cliffs, some over 2,000 feet tall. I've been to Zion several times, and its beauty never wanes. It's a park that is gut punch gorgeous, a place so perfect, a part of me immediately feels a kind of pain inside once I get here knowing that soon, I will once again have to leave it behind. Take everything, including the kitchen sink, with me. <laughs> you are taking everything but the kitchen sink. I like it. Please do. All right, Jeff. You good? I'm good. You guys go ahead. I'll catch up. Have fun. If we fan out, you want to come back, what, half hour? Yeah, yeah 20 minutes, half hour. Unfortunately for us on this trip, our pace is fast. This is literally a drive through shoot for us, with the plan to still get to Bryce Canyon National Park two hours away by tonight. On the scenic loop drive deeper into Zion Canyon, we pass the most popular feature in the park, a rock formation called Angel's Landing. The 2.5 mile long trail gains 1,500 feet in elevation from the Virgin River to the top of the landing. The trail itself is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and is a popular bucket list hike for many. The final half mile of the hike is where people either turn around or push on to the top, carefully climbing a knife edge trail with nothing but steady nerves and a chain handrail to guide them to the summit. From below looking up, hikers can be seen making the last daring climb on Zion's star attraction. And for those who touch the summit, stunning views of Zion Canyon stretch out in every direction. Look at this day, look at this. Absolutely perfect day. Blue skies, no clouds, temps are not brutally cold. And uh, walking up, I see Zach Allen right now. He's just finished a nice session, I'm sure. Yeah, that's your first, that's your first time here, so how are, you, how are you digging it? I'm loving this. Yeah. I mean, this is what I expected, but you know, it's better once you're here, it's for sure. Yeah, we're not even into the park yet. That's the crazy <laughs> thing. That's what's crazy is we're just, 
we're just drive. We just started the scenic drive, the scenic loop drive, right? So okay. this is usually closed during the summertime because there's too many people that come in here. So they, they shuttle you in on this part. But one of the benefits coming here in the wintertime is that typically it's open so you can drive your own car in. And that gives you the chance to jump out wherever you want. You can go at your own pace. Go at your own pace. Yeah, this is great. It is great. The scenic loop drive comes to an end at a place called the Temple of Senawava, and is where the famed Riverside Walk in Zion begins. This trail leads up the Virgin River to another popular place to explore in the park called the Narrows. Here, visitors navigate the Virgin River on foot, armed with wetsuit and special boots rented from various outfitters in Springdale. Okay, I've stopped just here off of uh, the scenic loop drive in Zion, and right behind me is a family of deer um, sitting down, bedded down right now uh, in the Cottonwoods, and I got some pretty good shots. I got the, I've got the big lens on. I've got the 600, 200 to 600 millimeter lens on right here, and so I'm getting a pretty good shot of the little baby, the little, da, the little fawn in there. You can see him sitting right in here, right in here. And um, there's a lot of deer in here. I've been here several times. And there's some great deer spotting in here, so you can see some great deer, some big bucks and two in here. And um, really pretty to sit here under these red rock cliffs. A little bit of traffic going by, but that's okay. It's a nice, beautiful afternoon. After splitting up for a while to grab different scenes from the Riverwalk trail area, I pick up Zach and Dave at the packed parking lot to move this train down the tracks. Had a great time. Did it work? Did you guys stick together? We stuck together, yeah. yeah. Zion is really a place that needs at least two or three days to do properly when planning a visit here. Since this is more of a pass-through experience for us, it's back to Utah Route 9 and up the switchbacks to climb towards Zion's backcountry beauty. We're on this cool little climb out on uh, Highway 9 up to 89. So you kind of climb out, you can see back there is where we were, back down in Zion National Park in the main canyon and the Virgin River. Now we're climbing up this really cool uh, switchback road from way down below, kind of comes up, switches back around behind me and keeps on going. And then it's gonna go into a tunnel, which goes through this whole rock right here. You can see a little window that's in the tunnel right there. That's a little vent. And the tunnel's inside, it keeps on going all the way back through. And then we're gonna punch out on the other side. Utah Route 9, also known as Zion Park Scenic Byway, leads us to the Zion Mount Carmel Tunnel a mile-long bore through petrified sand that at its time of completion in 1930 was the longest non-urban tunnel in the United States. And the light at the end of this tunnel illuminates a paradise of desert landscapes caught between seasons and the beauty that struggle leaves behind. What I truly love about this part of Southern Utah is that you don't have to be in a designated park or weave through crowded trailheads to have a memorable experience here. The only admission fee is a curious mind, an explorer spirit, and a love for natural settings that sometimes are tough to explain in words. After linking up with Highway 89 at Mount Carmel Junction, we head north towards Bryce Canyon National Park. Chasing light across the desert, hopeful for a few more shots to bag before darkness and below freezing temps creep back in. Another hour up the road, we turn east on one of America's best scenic drives, the legendary Utah Route 12 Scenic Byway. Snow still blankets the wide open fields of prairie sage and grasslands on a late winter afternoon that is slipping into night. Just before the sun sets, the geology that gives Bryce Canyon National Park its juice 15 miles further up the road gives us a sneak peek of what's to come. 
the singularly unique formations here, called hoodoos, stand like a forest of rock. Formed millions of years ago as inland seas and freshwater floods deposited massive amounts of fine-grained sediment that then became stone, only to be forced back into the elements through tectonic upheaval and slowly sculpted by time's hands of weathering and erosion. Okay, so it's uh, 6.15 in the morning. It's 16 degrees outside. This says 19 degrees in the car. It says 16 when I did the thing. Um, and we're gonna go shoot sunrise, because that's what you do when you're in Bryce Canyon National Park. You shoot the sunrise when it comes up over the, the hill to the east. Uh, lots of folks are up and at them. We see lots of people out, you know, coming with their backpacks and their camera equipment. Everybody's heading out right now. There's pretty much all the spots are good. Um, I think, Dave, the last time we were here, we shot at Inspiration Point. Yeah, I believe so. And not um, Sunrise Point, where I think a lot of people go. So we're gonna head there now and uh, see what it looks like. Bryce Canyon National Park, which despite its name is not actually a canyon, was named after Mormon pioneer Ebenezer Bryce that homesteaded here in 1874. Bryce is much smaller and at higher elevation than Zion National Park. You're okay. Yeah. Made up of amphitheaters of red rock hoodoos, park visitors typically look down at from the park's main road above. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're trying to figure out exactly where the sun's coming up. So we've got these programs that show us where the sun comes up, these apps. And so you say it's gonna come up over here just a little bit more, Zach, right? The main, the thing we're trying to, we're, we're trying to make sure we're at inspiration point and the, the, the terrain sort of wraps around the corner here. We want to make sure that we're not blocked by the actual sunrise. What's our elevation? 8,100 right 8,100 feet? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that wind coming up Canyon though. Woo. Yeah. Now there's actual inspiration point off to your right, up the hill. We can see the hoodoo starting to light up in the early morning light. If we look down, down to the city of Tropic, little town of Tropic down below, you might be able to see the lights, but man, it's gonna be beautiful. Let's go get our gear. Getting up to shoot sunrise means you're actually up well before sunrise to get everything ready. Once I'm here, in the moment, there's always a great sense of excitement. That chance that maybe this will be the one sunrise I'll always remember. As we stand here in the sub-freezing wind of a bitter cold Utah morning, waiting for the day's opening act, it feels like I remember them all. Okay, we are here at uh, Inspiration Point at Bryce Canyon National Park, right before sunrise. As you can see, it's starting to come together back there behind me. And, uh, ooh, really looking good over there. It's cold right now. It's uh, in the low teens. And the wind is blowing straight up the canyon behind me, right in my face when I turn around. Uh, but the guys are set up. Zach and Dave have a good position set up. We're all kind of shooting different uh, programs right now. Zach's got a time lapse going and some wide angle stuff. Dave's shooting some wide. I've got the big lens on to try to actually grab the sunrise itself coming up. The sun's arrival transforms the muted pastels of Bryce Canyon slowly. The higher its angle in the sky, the more intense the colors found here reflect that light, and the desert begins to glow from within. Bryce Canyon has many places along its rim to take in different views of the hoodoo formations below, but there's nothing like actually getting down into them. An excellent system of trails winds through these towers of rock that give you an entirely new perspective and appreciation of their size. All right, man. You can see when you get down below the rim, we're on the Queen's Garden Trail. When you get down in here and you're amongst these hoodoos, it's really cool. All right, D. It's been a while since you and I have been down on this old trail. It's been a few years. <laughs> yeah, it feels good to do that. It does. Same conditions, too, when we were here last time. We filmed here back in like 2011, I think it was, and we... Yeah, remember a lot of snow on the trail there. Yeah, it was January, and yeah. pretty cool. There's a lot of people, lots of folks out walking. 
enjoying the trail like we are today out here. Yeah, Beautiful fixed. sunny day. Didn't have picked a better day. No. It is fun. The rim views of Bryce Canyon are spectacular, and I recommend stopping at each of them, or better yet, do a nice hike along the rim trail to really take this place in. But even if you're short on time or not sure of your physical conditioning to venture off the overlooks above, try your best to take a short walk down into this surreal landscape to see, up close, how the forces of nature and time have created another masterpiece. So Hal, is this your first time to Bryce? It's my absolutely first time. And what's, what's it like out here for you? It is amazing. The sunrises and the sunsets that I've seen so far have just been spectacular. Uh, and just, I'm going down to the hoodoos right now to yeah. see what they are, and it's just very impressive. I'm not a professional like you. I'm <laughs> doing it the... Well, that's the, what this show's about. We inspire, pe way. we inspire people to do I it. I got with my what little 2X zoom yep, that yep. I clip on, yep. and so I go back and forth, and uh, then I'll clean them up at home with uh, digital zoom, yep. and I pick out the nice spots for people to, to see. I'll post them. We've got a little lens, in, a little lens envy going on. Half your lens is a hood. <laughs> Back above Bryce Canyon National Park now, we visit the most grand of the rim level views at Bryce Point. This platform extends well off the main wall of the canyon for stunning drop away views in almost 360 degrees. The trick here, after grabbing all the obvious shots, is to really pay attention to the detail of what is found far below. The main stops for services just outside the park boundaries in Bryce are home to several hotels, the shuttle service, and the historic Ruby's Inn. And is where we stop for a quick bite to eat lunch on another run and gun day. Picking up a little lunch, right? A lot of lunch. Zach, so and Zach. Yeah, we're at uh, we're a local sandwich uh, purveyor. All kind of spread out. Had a good Zach. Zach's, Dave's drinking some water. Zach's uh, eating his junk food. Did you, did you hit your three cookies already? My jalapeno chip. Did you? Know he's got three. He's got yep. three cookies. I got there. one for each of us. Well, no, you don't. Those are three for you. I know. I know that's how this rolls. I got a salad going here with no dressing on it, which has been slowing me down a little bit. Our last run of the day is to a place away from the main canyon area down Utah Route 12 to a trailhead of one of Bryce Canyon's many hidden gyms free from crowds. Okay, so we're parked at Mossy Cave Turnout. This is just like, uh, I'd say like four or five miles below Bryce off the turnoff from Bryce Canyon. So we're just gonna cruise on in here. It's about a half a mile hike into uh, the cave and along the way there's some really pretty hoodoos with some windows in them and a cool little creek running through. So we're gonna go check it out. The short hike into Mossy Cave along a trail that crosses a creek called Tropic Ditch is a fun way to wind down the day. This scenic walk leads us below another impressive display of hoodoo spires beginning to catch the late sun's vibrant rays casting long shadows across a frozen landscape. In winter months, Tropic Ditch Falls freezes completely, giving us easy access to admire a rare sight that so sharply contrasts with the desert scape surrounding it. A little further up the trail, and one short, steep little pull up a frozen path leads to another icy treasure in Bryce Canyon's backcountry to Mossy Cave. The last time I was here, this was a fully frozen giant waterfall hanging over the edge, and it's not there today. Lack of water in this little creek, who knows? But uh, still really pretty, Mossy Cave is. And really the trick is to just listen, which is hard to do right now, because I'm out of breath from climbing up out of the creek bed. So let's get some shots in here, this is really cool. This shelter cave becomes a frozen grotto in winter months and a cool retreat from the heat lined with moss and lichen in summer.
The desert southwest and the roads that wind through these rugged but approachable landscapes are not only fun to explore, they inspire a natural curiosity to see what's next. The wide open of Utah's southern parklands feed a wandering soul and awaken a creative beat in the hearts of those that have forgotten or have not yet discovered what travel through places like this can do for a person mired in the grind. We tell the stories of travel with our cameras. And as Utah Route 12 pulls us deeper to the east on a journey only halfway complete, new stories of places yet to see are waiting to be told. Production funding for Outside Beyond the Lens provided by Visit Fresno County. Nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's Central Valley. From Fresno and Clovis, you can drive to three nearby national parks by Hedrix Chevrolet. Hedrick Chevrolet is proud to support the spirit of travel in each of us. Every journey has a first step. Adventures start here. By Advanced Beverage Company, serving Bakersfield and Kern County for over 50 years. From our family to yours, supporting Valley PBS and the wonders of travel. By the Penstar Group, promoting growth and opportunity in business through collaboration and partnerships for the future by Hodges Electric, serving California's Central Valley for over 50 years, dedicated to supporting public television and the calling in all of us to explore. And by Visit Yosemite Madera County, California's gateway to Yosemite National Park. Explore the outdoor magic of Madera County and be inspired to discover more.